Welcome back to my desk. So funny story. I had already recorded all of this, but I accidentally just deleted the footage. So bear with me as I do a recreation of my intro. Hey guys, I'm so excited right now. Look, we got a thing from Tesla SY or Tesla C. I don't know how it's said. Wow, look at that. There's so much stuff inside. I can't wait to show you. <laughs> oh, man. That's pathetic. I'm sorry. Um, it is actually really cool. Um, I have the rest of the recording. I just didn't have the intro. Basically, they sent me this for free to review. I'm just letting you guys know right up front. Um, I did not pay for this, but I am giving an honest review on it. So with that being said, let's continue on with the show. Okay, so I know it gave you a pry tool. And if you don't have any tools of your own, it's nice. But I highly recommend you get yourself a set of real, actual pry tools, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of mods in your car. Like, these are absolute must-haves. I'm gonna leave a link in the description uh, to the ones that I use and the ones that I recommend, along with a little pick tool here. So let's get in here and get it installed. We're gonna start with this side right here. And you can actually just pull this off. Like, there's no rivets or anything that you have to worry about. You can literally just pull it out and it comes right out, so. All right, so we're gonna start with this panel right here. Grab a pry tool of your choice. This is the one I'm gonna use. Again, links in the description below. This one actually has two clips right up here. So we're gonna take care of these first. I'm gonna start by going around this side just because I can get in there and then lift up and work my way up. You'll see these are finally loose. Come down here whole thing comes out. Next up, this right here. I'm actually gonna use this pry tool just because it gives me a little bit more leverage to be able to pull it. So grab onto it and then pull and it just comes out like that. Now right here you'll notice there's a little clip that's holding everything in. Um, I like to use pick tools. Not everybody's comfortable with them. You could always use a pry tool. The one that came with it is just fine. But I'm gonna use this to get underneath this little cap, lift up. So once you have it like this, you're good to start pulling. Now this is all one piece right here. So it's gonna come out together. I like starting from the bottom. You can see there's already some space for your hand fingers to go into. You can use a pry tool or your hands. I'm just gonna use my hands because, you know, why not? Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start at the bottom, pull up. And then once you have it somewhat loose, you wanna pull this way to pull it out. There you go. Once you're down here, there's two things you wanna look for. The OBD port, which is this blue connector right here, and then this one right here. All vehicles are different, so if yours isn't right here, there, there shouldn't be anything connected to it. But if it's not right here, you might find it back here somewhere, so keep looking for an open blue connector. Remember, there should be nothing connected to it. It should be nice and open so you can plug in your own stuff right here. So this should go ahead and just plug right in there. Nice satisfying click. And then this part of the harness connects right here. There's a little push tab that you wanna push in while you lift up. So push in and lift up that disconnects that and then you plug this T-harness in its place. First connector there, second connector here, and that's pretty much it. Now you just have to find a place to put all this so it doesn't get in the way and we'll move up to the top. So we have two lights here and the way these connect is the shorter of the two is going to be on the same side that that OBD connector is going to be on. The longer of the two is going to go on the opposite side. Now there's multiple ways to run this. There's no wrong way to do it. I'm going to show you the way that I find most useful. You want the sensor sticking out this way so you can obviously like see that part right there. But I'm going to fold the cable in like this. Shove it into place. And then this cable I'm going to route through the back. Just like that, thing is in place, wire is hidden, and the version that I have has a USB-C, 
that's going to plug in directly into this little adapter that came with it. So we'll just plug that in. And now we're going to route to the other side. Oh hey, it's already blinking. Nice. So for this next part, there's no wrong answers. We have to hide these cables so that they're out of the way and they don't rattle up against the frame of the vehicle. Now, if they rattle or not, that's not going to affect the outcome of the situation, but I prefer not to have extra noise. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to route them here. That plug just happens to fit nicely behind these two factory locations right here. So that's where it's going to live. The USB-C port, I'm actually going to run through the outside here. So I'm going to unplug it, run through the top. so that that can fit in that same location. Oh, actually, through here, and then out, so that it's mostly following that same location. And then the free OBD port, I'm just gonna tuck behind the existing one. Or actually, you know what? I can kind of just shove this in here like this. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Before you put anything back, make sure it's plugged in and working before you continue. And then we close her back up. God, I remember having to explain this to customers when I worked on their cars. In order to get these panels back in, sometimes you do have to be a little bit more rough than you'd like. Basically, make sure everything lines up. There's clips down here. The part at the top right here I'll show you in a little bit. But once they're lined up, you just give it a nice little hit all the way down. Give it a little pull to make sure that everything is in place. And then we continue. We put this back in. Nice and secure. You'll see this has a little hook. Make sure that lines up. Then push it in. And then push that in. You're all set. And again, this Just push this back into place. Look at that. It's like we weren't even here. All right, so now we have this long cable and we're underneath the glove box on the passenger side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this cable through the back to the center console. And then we'll move on from there. All right, now let's move on to the center. This part's fairly easy. You'll see that there's a little crease here by the center like wireless charging pad. Just stick it in there. It's a thin cable. You're not gonna damage anything, don't worry. Again, I've done this multiple times on different vehicles. It's the easiest, least intrusive way to run wires. And again, get yourself a good pry tool to be able to push it in. Once we're on the driver's side, we're just going to do the same thing. Just going to tuck the wire in. And this one, I'm actually going to tuck in between these two panels right here. It looks like there's just enough space that I can just run it through there. So what you do is just pull on one side so it's lined up. And then use the pry tool to just push it in. Look at that. It's like it's not even there. Now I didn't show this part because it's literally the same as the other side, but this is gonna push in, wire goes through the back, and then we close it up. All right, so it's gonna be a little tight, but what you're gonna wanna do is push it in first, and as you're pushing it in, run this wire back through this part right here. There's a little gap, so it's enough for the wire to go through. Be careful not to pull too much on this connector right here. And again, take your trusty pry tool and just make it work. And there we go. Let's close it up and take a look at how it works. So once we're done, you're left with a pretty factory looking install. It doesn't get in the way. 
I thought it was going to get in the way of the heater, but realistically, like, it's so far to the side that it doesn't really matter. I'm in the passenger seat, my wife's going to be driving, and we're going to see how they look. So this is the upgraded version. It's supposed to be a lot better than the original, like, beta version that they were working on. One of the cool updates, um, other than now it's USB-C instead of USB-A, it has the light detectors when you have the blinkers turned on. So if we turn the blinker to the right, you'll see that it is now blinking green. Blinker to the left. Perfect. All right, let's go for a test drive. All right, so the way the blind spot detection works, and I know what you guys are thinking, it should show up on the screen, and it does, but there's two different people that this is for. The people that don't like FSD and the people that can't have FSD. Every time you turn the blinker, you're going to be looking at the mirror onto the right hand or left hand side. That little blinker just lets you know that you're good to go. Now, if there is a car in the blind spot, as the name suggests, blind spot detector, it'll actually start flashing red to let you know that there is something or someone in your blind spot preventing you from turning. It only turns on when there's a car in your blind spot moving in the same direction as you. So as we pass by cars, you're actually not going to see that little indicator go off. We're going to test it right here. Hey, look at Tesla. Nothing. We're going to try it again with a car going in the same direction as us, and then you'll see it turn on. All right, getting on the highway, and we'll see how these lights do. So the first test I want to try is what it looks like when we turn the blinker on, but there's somebody already in our blind spot. So I'm gonna wait until the car is like right here, basically like right on us and turn the blinker on. The screen should turn red to indicate that there's somebody there, but that should also turn red. All right, here we go. Interesting. light yet. Are you colorblind? I might be colorblind. It turned red as he was next to us and then when I turned the blinker on it was red. <laughs> so you can't see that. I should clarify. I am actually colorblind. <laughs> okay, there's a the car here. We'll see what happens. Oh dear God. Kind of. I saw the light turn on a little bit. Uh, so either the red needs to be brighter or a different color. Man, if they had a colorblind mode, that'd be cool. But yeah, basically right when the when the vehicle is right next to us, that's when it turns red. Okay, so then for this final test, I want to see what happens when we turn the blinker on and there's a car there, but then we overtake the car, and then we can merge over. So theoretically, it should go from red to, I think, yellow, orange, and then green, letting you know that you're good to go. So let's try it here. So red, and then green, okay. So it didn't go to orange, but it did go to green, letting you know that you were finally safe to go. When it turned green, would you say you felt comfortable turning? Yeah. So now we're gonna do full self-driving to see if they still turn on. I mean, there's no reason it shouldn't. I just wanna make sure that all the features work properly. We're gonna be turning left here. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we have to get in the far left hand. We're in the right hand, and there's gonna be a vehicle coming to our left here in just a second, so we'll see what happens. Okay, it stayed green. I wonder if it's because it knows we're not moving. Probably. Aha. So, the camera turned red. I didn't see if the sensor turned red, though. It did. It did? Yep, see? There oh, perfect. Again. All right, yeah, they both turned red at the same time. Cool. Still not going to get over because now there's a semi. And we're just going to 
let him go because he's big. Very nice. Perfect. I like it. Okay, so final thoughts. Who is this for? Personally, I wanted it because I wanted to make this car as close to the Highland as possible. The Highland basically has these things incorporated into the tweeters. And although I wasn't able to put it in the tweeter, I was able to at least get this going so that it's closer to the Highland as possible. Realistically, am I going to be using them? Probably not. I use full self-driving almost exclusively. And on the off chance that I'm not using it, that's when I'm really going to need to take advantage of it. My wife does not like using full self-driving, so she actually thinks that these are awesome and make her feel a lot safer when driving the car. Because, quote unquote, this car is panic inducing. Anyway, I'm going to leave a link to these in the description below. Make sure to use promo code TTEOJ for discount on this product and... I get a little bit of commission on it for no extra expense to you. It's a great way to support this channel to get more cool mods coming up here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.